Hey, good morning, everybody. I am uh, I'm out today uh, early in the morning on a uh, southeastern uh, Pennsylvania tailwater. So uh, you can hear the traffic behind me. Uh, if you're local, you probably can figure out where I am. It's not real hard to guess, but uh, I don't want to be accused of spot burning. So it is a tailwater. Uh, for some reason, I don't understand that the, the water is all brown. It looks like uh, it looks like chocolate milk and uh, it's it the, the flow is not overly you know above average or anything we haven't had any rain there is a construction project upstream so i don't know if that has something to do with it but anyway uh, i'm going to give it a shot uh, i'm not real confident i'm about as confident uh in this as i was the steelers yesterday against the bills and that one purdy so uh what i'm going to do i'm going to change gears i was hoping to come up in nymph um i have my my uh 10 weight or my 10 foot three weight rather uh, all ready to go but i'm gonna i'm gonna think about using a jig streamer here because uh i just think they're gonna need something to see so uh, i'm gonna be using a black jig streamer here and see if i can get into some fish if i can't get into any fish up here i'm gonna go up above where the construction is i do think that has something to do with the dirty water so anyway this this stream is one of my local uh favorites it's it's always dependable a uh, little bit concerned about it because this summer it it was getting into some temperatures i've never seen mid 70s um even with the cold water release uh i don't think they could keep temps in the reservoir uh below in the 70s so i'm hoping the fish have survived here i uh i have not been here since june since probably the middle of june and i know this summer was really hard on this stream it has not been stocked uh, it is due for its fall stocking here, I think this coming week, but I'm hearing that's being delayed. Uh, so I don't know uh, to expect that or not. I really don't know. Uh, the TCO site has been saying to go bass fishing uh, since July. Uh, it, it, the, the temps now are just getting to where you'd want to fish. They are at 60 and below. I think this morning they're 59. Um, but the, the air has been cool this morning, so we're going to get after it with a jig streamer and uh, hopefully we get some. Thanks for watching. There we go. There we got one to take. <clears throat> that makes me feel a little better. Right up along the bank there. There is a jig streamer eater. There you go. That is a Pennsylvania stocked rainbow trout. But it's good to see that he survived the summer. Uh, that tells me that maybe there's a chance here. Maybe there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. All right, so I got that guy on uh, this jig streamer right here. I'll show it to you. It is a uh, tied on a jig hook and uh, designed to use with a tight line rig. It's just some marabou and uh, some polar chenille. Uh, tied with a 4.0 bead on a on a size 12 jig hook, and um, as you can see, you just fish it like you would a nymph, but you put a little action to it. And every once in a while, something happens. So let's see if we can't trigger some more strikes. Is 
And the reason I'm going with the jig streamer here, um, for some reason the water just got really, really muddy. And I uh, wanted something that was visible. So I went with black. And that seemed to do the trick. It'd be fun to get into about, oh, I don't know, 10, 20 more of those. Oh, I don't know if that was a fish or if that was debris. There we go. That's another one. Felt him bump it. All right, I feel a little better now. Feel a little better here. This is a better fish too. All right, so apparently they did survive the summer. Oh, he got off, dang it. All right, let's see if I can't get another one here. So for whatever reason, a bunch of <clears throat> dirty water came flowing down here. Um, just along the edge, the mud hasn't clearly taken. So there's some, some clear spots that I'm trying to hit. Right along the edge here, I picked up two on this jig streamer. Right in the tree. Luckily, got that one out. There we go. The <sighs> healthy fish. Don't like when they get downstream of me like that, but little I could do there. That's where I hooked him, and that's where he took off. So I'm going to try to bring him back up to me. Keeping side pressure on him. I'm going to try to work him up above me, then bring him down into the net. Looks like a pretty good sized fish. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Brown. <clears throat> Good size brown, another streamer eater. All right, we'll take this guy, we're gonna get him back in the water. Nice, probably 15 inch brownie. All right, buddy. He took the uh, he took the jig streamer. It's the third one I picked up here now. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. I was a little concerned earlier. Um, Apparently these fish find a way to survive because I can tell you the temperature uh, in this stream was in the mid 70s for a good part of the summer. So um, 
they must find places uh, that are cool enough to survive. I see a heron down there. Uh, I guess they become <clears throat> a little easier pickings when there's less water. But um, we're now in October. Uh, the water is at a good 59 degrees today. So I think the trout are safe until next summer. Let's hope they keep taking my jig streamer. There we go. Well, I think I found the right ticket with the jig streamer today. They are on it. This is number four. This guy took it on the uh, took it on the bend, on the swing. All right. So brown, see you buddy. You see that heron downstream watching me. I think I'm out fishing him so far today. I know these fish will get a little bit more aggressive. The brown trout especially in the fall. I think that combined with this dirty water, making for a pretty good streamer bite. I haven't had to move far since I've got into them here. There's just a clear section of water right along the bank here under the, all this canopy. And again, with the jig streamer, it's not... When you're fishing it on the Euro rig, you're really treating it much like you do a nymph. You're just putting a little bit of action into it. You're still keeping an eye on that cider, just like there. <laughs> um, I didn't feel that one, but I did notice that the cider moved and, uh, or stopped rather, and I set the hook. So it, it's not like your typical streamer bite. Um, it's very much like um, when they bite on a Euro nymph. Um, you, you've really got to detect it, and uh, you got to see it right there. The, 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 the cider just paused a bit. And when I set the hook, sure enough, there was a fish. Now that is the fifth fish that I've gotten out of this stretch. That's a really good sign. I, I was really concerned for this stream. So, uh, and I know they have not stocked it yet. Uh, there is a fall stocking, I believe has been delayed. This stream really depends on the stocking, I think, to maintain its population. There is a wild population of brown trout here. Um, but, it is not an overwhelming wild population, at least yet. All right. Let's see. As you can see, all right. Always try to work the fish upstream. This is a decent rainbow. There we go. Scoop him up. Take a look at him there. Take a look at him in the net. Keep him in there. You streamer eater, you. Boy, he's really pinked up. All right, well, I found the uh, the culprit of the brown water. You can see here, uh, this is a little tributary that they are doing work on. And um, what a mess. They, uh, they're really messing this up. I don't understand it. Um, that used to all be weightable water out there, fishable water. 
Um, and all I see now is a sandbar building up from all of the sediment. So, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but uh, I think I'm going to head upstream here. I shouldn't have to deal with any more mud issues. All right, well, I guess that uh, just about does it. I did go up and fished a little bit, uh, just for about an hour above uh, that tributary that was dumping in all the mud. I ran into a couple of guys and you know, just got the sense I was fishing in water that had been fished over a couple of times. And uh, I managed to roll one on a nymph. Uh, the streamer bite definitely wasn't, wasn't the ticket up here where the water was back to normal flow and clear. So um, conditions still aren't great. Uh, the, 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 the flow's at about 161 here. Um, which I guess is average for this time of year, but uh, I think this, this stream is just really starting to recover now with temps coming down. Uh, big temperature change here. Uh, it, it's probably getting close to 70 degrees. It was, it was about 40 degrees, uh, a little under 40 degrees actually uh, getting started. So um, all in all, not a bad morning. Uh, picked up about a half a dozen fish uh, in, a, in a stream where I wasn't sure if there were gonna be any. So. Uh, not my best day ever here, but not bad for, for just a morning to get out. So, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, uh, supporting the site, troutstrike.com. Uh, I'm going to do uh, a tying video to uh, go along with this one as well. So, uh, if you like this, uh, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and also check us out at troutstrike.com. Have a great day.